And we're back, and we're doing an RL circuit. Um, this is a the second type of circuit that we have. Gen generally, we have uh, everything in series with each other: a resistor, a battery, an inductor. But kind of like with capacitors, we we have a second type where the inductor and resistor might be in parallel with each other. And again, similar to a capacitor circuit, um, this type is a, a little more challenging mathematically. And so we really just kind of focus on uh, the details of what happens initially and what happens after the so-called long time. Well, this sort of uh, depends on a couple things. Um, the first of which is we, we have to consider what the voltage across the inductor depends on. It depends on changing flux. Remember, it's a coil of wire, like a, like a solenoid in a circuit. And so when current is changing, um, it's changing the magnetic field. That's a change in flux, and according to Faraday's law and Lenz's law, weird things happen. So inductors initially fight current. They fight the battery. You're going from zero flux when the switch is open to a big burst of, of flux when the battery tries to pump a current. So initially, DIDT is very big. Um, so that the voltage across an inductor is, is a maximum at time equals zero. Okay, so, so basically initially inductors fight current. This is the opposite of what capacitors do. Initially currents want current, they want to charge up. Inductors, because of Lenz's law, they're trying to fight the current. So because of that, what happens when you first close the switch is that you get an induced current in the inductor which is fighting what the battery tries to do. The net effect is that they cancel each other out. Okay, So effectively your, your circuit initially is just this loop on the left and the current is going to flow through the two resistors. So your initial current is actually the voltage of your battery divided by R1 plus R2. Now the, the, the characteristic of inductors by themselves, if you think of the, the current as a function of time, is that they kill current initially and then the current grows exponentially to some maximum. So as time goes on, um, you, act, you actually get more and more current to flow through that inductor over there. And after a long time, the inductor is just a piece of wire. It, it doesn't fight anymore. Um, now in the picture that we have, um, we notice that I didn't put any resistor on the branch with uh, the inductor. So if, if that were true, if this were like a superconductor, um, after a long time there's no resistance on that branch and so all of your current will just be going on that around like the outside loop, bypassing R2. Okay, so for this particular case, your current after a long time would be the voltage of just divided by R1. Um, now, if there happened to be a, a third resistor on that branch, Okay, then, uh, after a long time, it's as if the inductor is not even there. It's just a, a piece of wire. And so it would be kind of like R2 and R3 were in parallel with each other. If that's the case, then your current after a long time would actually turn out to be the voltage divided by total resistance, which would be R1 plus whoops, um, R2 and R3 in parallel. It would look something like that. So, yeah, it's kind of weird. It's, it's the opposite of what capacitors do. Um, you know, keep in mind that capacitors, after a long time, they, they kill current. They, you know, they take out whatever piece of the circuit that they're on. Um, here, the inductor fights current initially, and then acts like it's not even there after a long time. So that, that's the gist of what's going on here. And... Um, yeah, I, I hope it helps. Uh, again, all these effects are happening because of changes in flux. 
And so until next time, I hope all is well.